Hi guys, chronically annoyed here, um, so I wanted to clarify some things before we jump into the video. My three service dog handler friends and I decided to go on a training session to Lowe's. We understand that Lowe's is pet friendly and that running into other dogs is a risk at training there. We were all feeling pretty good health-wise, mentally and physically, and we all decided on that uh, location. So we went and we started training and we were approached by this like middle-aged man and that's the interaction you're about to see. So I really appreciate a couple things. I appreciate that the man did not approach us further when we said, you know, no, these are service dogs, we're training. He didn't get any closer. I really appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate the fact that his dog uh, was actually well behaved for being in public because service dog ESA labels don't matter if you're gonna bring your pet into a pet friendly place into any public place and in whether it's supposed to be there or not this is gonna sound weird but it needs to be behaved and this dog was behaved so I do appreciate that I did not personally interject into this conversation um, I was working with my service dog uh, getting him to focus on me and ignore and ignoring the unfamiliar dog, which he did really well. I'm really proud of him. Um, but the conversation you're hearing is between two out of three, actually all three of them, input uh, and the man that approached us. So um, just keep in mind while you're watching, YouTube videos don't give the whole picture. Um, and my friends were trying to politely educate him. Um, but he was being a little obstinate, you know, we can't, we can't change people's minds if, you know, um, we can't make people change their ways. We were just giving him the information we had based on the information he was giving us. But we got to the point where I just, I wanted all of us, I want, I wanted all of us to get out of that situation. So I, I pulled the chronic illness card. Um, I wasn't feeling too great at the point of me interjecting. But that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Just keep those things in mind and that this was just an interaction that happened. Some other things happened later in the evening, um, but I don't think that's relevant to this video. You can also find another, like, version of this video over on my friend's channel, Girl and Lab. Um, she gives it from her perspective and she has a little bit more video footage from the rest of the evening and us leaving Lowe's, but I cut that out just because that's, um, because I really just wanted to focus on the interaction we had in Lowe's in this video. Anyway, go ahead and feel free to leave your comments. Um, please be respectful. Um, enjoy the video. Thanks. And I'm glad that he's able to be there for you and be emotional support for you. Good focus. Good boy. Uh, yeah, he, he's registered. Yeah. As a service dog. Well, you know the that service dog registries okay. are actually a scam, right? Whenever you pay to get that certification, okay. since the ADA law does not require a certification, um, right. the, they, they basically just stole your money. Yeah. Yeah, registrations are not um, recognized. Yeah, Because you're um, saying your dog is task trained to help you with a disability when he's not trained to do anything specific besides emotional support, which isn't really a task. Under the it's, law. it's literally not recognized. Literally under ADA law, it says emotional support is not a task Focus. and is not recognized as a service animal. Focus. Good. So Focus. Um, by bringing him into businesses and bringing him that showing that ID card. You're actually making it a lot harder on people with, say, diabetic alert dogs or uh, other service dogs to go into those businesses because then... Yeah, yeah.
it is. I, I know people who have registered service Nutella jars. Like, leave it. Leave it. Settle. Focus. Delilah. Focus. Settle. Focus. Good focus. Good boy. Focus. Leave it. I mean, those IDs actually aren't, uh, they're actually starting to crack down on them. The Better Business Bureau, Bureau and the HUD boy. Department, as well as, like, the Department of Justice, they're all starting to get those websites disbanded because what they're doing is illegal and they're masquerading as government entities good when they boy. aren't. And they're making it extremely hard for people with disabilities to go into a business because... No. Um, good. Good focus. My dog is trained to mitigate my disability, but I don't have an ID card. And anytime I go anywhere um, after somebody who's shown that official looking ID card, I get given crap and I get kicked out. And then I have to file a complaint and then they, that results in a bunch of other stuff. And it usually tends to result in like lawsuits so and other stuff like that. that uh, no, because those are all scams. They don't exist in the United States. The only documentation you can have is, like, say, if you have a psychiatric service dog trained to mitigate his psychiatric disabilities, like bipolar, schizophrenia, or something like Leave that, it. you can have a focus. letterhead from your psychiatrist focus. Yes. or something like that saying that they you prescribed focusing. you that, that, that oh, service dog, but other than that, there's nothing that is there. And that's an issue in itself, but the registries and the online stuff focus. is all fake, and so... Right here. Leave it. ...into a restaurant and showing that right card... Go lay down. Go lay down. Right here. Done. But if he is just doing emotional support, I wouldn't label him as a service dog just because that can be taken to federal court and you can get fined a lot of money for falsely saying your dog is a service dog rather than emotional support. It's what? So just for your safety, I, I wouldn't necessarily do it anymore, but I mean, it's your dog. Well, and the other reason why I, why that's also pointed out is if another dog Lukey were to attack your dog and you were to tell the police that there was a service animal, there would be a lawsuit resulting from that. And in court, you have to prove that you trained that dog. To do so, tests. for example, like I keep a book of training to prove that you trained that dog. To do so, tests. for example, like I keep a book of training to records. That. Of this is what task I trained her on, what day, what time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Blue, leave it. Um, and right. you have to prove, you have to produce that proof that you yes. did get the dog trained. Some people go through like a private trainer, and they'll be like, they'll produce that proof that that from that private trainer of the hours that that private trainer spent with that dog. And if you don't have that proof, you can get up to I think it's what two thousand five hundred dollar fine. For bringing in a dog that's not actually trained as a service animal oh, to mitigate his disability. Just slipping and falling. And on top of that, I mean, oh, not only boy. would your dog have been attacked, but you're also dealing with the vet bills from that and all that I'm other sure. stuff. And then the other person can also sue you on top of that for having your dog in there, causing their dog emotional duress. And that just results in a big snafu that I just, personally, I wouldn't want to deal with if I were in your shoes. Yeah. I mean, but everybody now, makes their own calculated never, risks. Been I've been doing it for over two years. It's never been questioned. Delilah, ignore. Uh, we, but I, I am a, a, a licensed master instructor. Oh, no. that was my fault. I touched his tail. I mean, and it has to be more than basic obedience. You have to prove that you trained him to do that task beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so if he's, even though he may have basic obedience and all that stuff, it, you, he needs to actually be able to do a task to mitigate your disability. Tell me how you can uh, prove that your dog is uh, able to do a task or trained to do a task. You would have to have a medic, right? Not necessarily. I would just have to have those um, training records proving what tasks I taught them. Yeah, it doesn't hold water with me. Just because you taught them doesn't mean that they're capable of doing it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it holds up in a federal court. So, I mean, I guess that's really the m most important part is a federal court over than somebody on the street. Well, that's kind of who it is because, because you train.
Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you.